But doc, I wouldn't know if I have labor pains. What am I supposed to actually experience? What am I supposed to feel? I am not very sure. I'm actually not even confident about myself. Have you ever heard about labor pains before? Are you a first time mother? Are you panicked? Don't worry, that is why we are here today. Welcome to yet another session on Skills versus the Midwife. This is your host, Nurse Rosalie Odiambo. And today we are going to equip us with the information we require whenever we have labor pain. So we have been walking um, through a journey with this pregnant woman and we've been talking a lot about how she can care for herself. So now it is time for her to actually go into labor and uh, she needs to deliver the baby. And uh, most of the time you realize for first time pregnant women, they may not really know. And that is the essence of us. This is where we come in because we are able to advise them and tell them what to expect when we talk about signs of labor. The labor pains will automatically occur because the brain will influence the pituitary gland to actually uh, start producing the oxytocin hormone. So the oxytocin receptors will be you know, triggered so that they can start producing oxytocin hormone at term. And this oxytocin hormone is the one that is responsible now to stimulate the uterine muscles so that they can start contracting. And this is what we call uterine contractions. At the same time, there'll be production of prostaglandin that is responsible for cervical ripening. So when we talk about cervical ripening, it simply means that the prostaglandin will actually be produced to act on the cervical collagen so that it can be able to soften it. So in the process of softening it, it's, it can stretch. And at the end of the day, we will have another process we call cervical effacement. Now it is the cervical effacement that will lead to cervical dilatation. Number one sign of labor, therefore, will be uterine contractions. So this onset of uterine contractions and this uterine contractions should be increasing in frequency and intensity. So the strength of the uterine contractions must be increasing and also the frequency of the uterine contraction, how often do they occur, should also be increasing. Now when she experiences this pain, then we normally teach them that this pain should be felt. Of course, it will begin from the uh, lower pelvic region, but it should always radiate to the back. So whenever she has the pain, and this is how you can actually tell that this is true labor, because there's also false labor. And also, let's be reminded that we also have Braxton Hicks contractions that are not really true labor. And therefore, we can know the difference if the pain she's feeling is actually increasing in intensity, they are taking longer by the time, and also they are increasing in frequency. So she must be feeling the pain more and also the pain has to be increasing but the pain has to radiate to the back number two she can also observe a discharge that we normally call show so the show will appear to be bloody and mucary at the same time so it can actually spot on her panty or if she had a, she has a pad on so when you're teaching uh, women healthcare providers please let them know that sometimes they can have a spot of bloody mucary discharge that is coming out this is a sign of true labor as well and number three we also have what we call breaking of waters when you hear the word waters it simply means amniotic fluid so when the amniotic the membranes actually rupture what normally happens is that the fluid will gush out the amniotic fluid will gush out remember the amniotic fluid is fluid that we expect uh, the the fetus to be swimming in and also growing so at the end of the pregnancy most of the time you realize that the uh, the membranes will rupture and the amniotic fluid will gush out teach them to differentiate amniotic fluid from urine because some of the women especially the first time mothers will think that this is urine and they may not tell the difference and um, at some time they really get confused and tell themselves oh uh, I micturated on myself and I didn't know, okay, they just go change and everything is simple and everything is normal. But tell them that they need to differentiate because the gush of fluid will be coming out in large amounts. Even if it comes out in small amounts, this is a sign that should make all women to go to the facility so that they can be checked. There is normally a test that we do to confirm if it's really amniotic fluid or it is urine. Now, there could be women who may not have uterine contractions uh, at term, and once you realize that, please, if you are already term, 40 weeks pregnant, then it means you're supposed to be delivering. 
please dash to the facility and also healthcare pro providers tell as you are advising them in the clinic tell them to actually go to the facility the minute they are 40 weeks and there's no pain there's no uterine contractions there could be a problem or they could just be having um uh, issues or problems with the production of oxytocin hormone and therefore they will be induced at the end of the day. So what have we learned? We've said first sign we have uterine contractions that are actually beginning from the uh, front pelvic region radiating to the back. They are increasing in frequency and and also strength that is the intensity and number two we've also talked about show that is the bloody mucari discharge that is actually um, produced and number three we've also said the breaking of the amniotic fluid so once all this has been ascertained uh sometimes they may not all come at the same time but even if one has been experienced the woman should quickly rush to the facility so that she can be taken care of other signs will come along as long as we have the initial phases or stages that have or signs that have been seen then others will follow like cervical dilatation and cervical effacement and eventually the baby will be born without any problems otherwise we encourage all of us to be on the outlook uh, if you're taking care of any client make sure you equip them with this information for all those uh, first time mothers watching me and all those who are preparing to have their births you know you could be ha have given birth before but still you need this information to refresh yourself uh, i wish you all the best in your delivery process next video will be talking about how to cope during labor thank you